Hello YouTube. Hope you all doing well on this Tuesday evening. I was doing a little research and I thought I found a, a little something I thought you might find a little interesting. It's on three forgotten American, African Americans that did so much to change America as we know it today. It's the little things that they did. The first one that I'm going to speak on is on Elizabeth Jennings Graham. In 1854, 101 years before Rosa Parks made her a historic stand in Montgomery, Elizabeth Jennings Graham, Graham made one of her own in New York City. Graham and a friend were on their way to church. They were running late. So Graham didn't wait for a horse-drawn car designated for colored people. She held the first one she saw and got in. The white driver balked and complained and refused to drive her. Graham stood the ground, so the driver finally continued on. However, when he stopped to pick up white passengers, Graham still refused to move. The driver finally hauled Graham from the car and tossed her onto the sidewalk. Graham was furious at the way she had been treated, so she wrote a letter detailing the incident. It was read to her church family and sent to Frederick Douglass's paper and the editor at the New York City Daily Tribune. Graham's father hired Chester Arthur to take his daughter's court case to court. Arthur won the case. And in another year, New York City's transportation was fully integrated. None of it would have happened if Elizabeth Jeannie's ground hadn't refused to give up a seat. Now this is one lady who said she wanted to get to church and be there on time. And she wasn't letting no designated car just for, for colored people stop her from getting where she had to go. So she did this. That little thing made a big difference. From then on, like I said, New York was fully integrated for passengers, black or white, to go where they wanted to. By the way, Here's a picture of her. This next individual, his name is James Amistead Lafayette. His original name was James Amistead. But we get to the Lafayette thing later. Sometimes to win a war, all a commander needs is a perfectly placed spy. James Armistead Lafayette, a Virginia slave, had the perfect cover. He served under Marquis de Lafayette, the commander of the French forces allied with the American Continental Army. Armistead managed to convince British General Charles Cornwallis that he was a runaway slave. So he was hired to spy on the American army. He gained the confidence of Benedict Arnold and Cornwallis, and re he relayed vital information to Lafayette and Washington about the British Army's movements and supplies. In the summer of 1781, Armistead's report helped Washington win the battle at Yorktown, which resulted in the surrender of the British. Now, despite these heroic acts, in the American Revolution, Armistead was returned to his master after the war and continued to live as a slave. When the Marquis de Lafayette discovered this, he testified on behalf of Armistead. And two years later, the Virginia Grand Assembly emancipated Armistead, who changed his name to Lafayette in honor of the general who spoke up for him 
and fought for this man's freedom. This is a picture of it. This man, this man tricked the British right. in believing that he was, like I said, on a spy for the American Continental Army. And actually, he was spying against them to help the revolution that helped win the war, the Revolutionary War. This next individual is Elizabeth Freeman. Elizabeth Freeman's courage and determination to face her master created a court case that forever changed Massachusetts. Freeman was born a slave in 1742 in New York. In the 1770s, she was sold to Colonel John Ashley. In Ashley's household, Freeman suffered such abuse from the Colonel's wife she fled the home. She ran away, and she refused to return. Freeman had often heard Ashley and his friends discuss the Declaration of Independence and the Bill of Rights, and she began to wonder why the statute set forth in those documents couldn't apply to her. She enlisted the help of Ashley's friend, attorney, Theodore Sedgwick, who listened to Freeman's case for freedom. In 1781, Sedgwick initiated the case, Brown and Bett versus Ashley, in which he argued for, for Freeman's freedom using the Massachusetts Constitution, which stated that all individuals were born free and equal. The jury agreed with the argument and the case set a precedent. This is a picture of her. Now, Elizabeth Freeman, she used the very laws of the system to fight for freedom, and she won. She set a, a precedent for the ending of slavery in Massachusetts. Sometimes it's the little things that make a big difference in changing the world and changing America. African Americans have done those little things that make a big difference in bettering this world and America as a whole. Now, each three of these people, like I said, they're forgotten. They're not too much known on them. It wasn't too much written on them, if anything. But like I said, they shouldn't be forgotten. It's the little things that can make a difference that can change America and us as a whole. Standing up for what you believe in and fighting for what you what you know is right. Elizabeth Jennings Ram, for one, she refused to get off of that horse-drawn carriage. She had to get to church to worship her God. And because of her steadfastness and believing that she was right. Things turned out for the best for her. James Armistead Lafayette, a man who believed that he should be free as well. And he, he did so many things to change the course of that revolutionary war by spying on people. If they knew what he was doing, Lord knows torture that he would have went through. They would have found out that he was spying for the British to help the Revolutionary War. It would have made a big difference in the case that, just imagine if he would have been found out, but he was smart enough not to get found out, and he helped change that war. And Elizabeth Freeman, Freeman here she was. She used the very laws of the system, and it worked for her, and it changed the course. These people are little known facts that should be, if you can, you know, to, to learn things about. And I'm learning so much myself.
by doing these things. And I appreciate you listening to me. And Black History Month is one of the shortest months. As I always said, this is not just black history. This is America's history. And it, just keep doing your own research. And I hope you appreciate this. And I hope to maybe do something else a little while later. But this is conclusion and for African American History Month. Till the next time, I love you. Take care of yourself. And always remember, history, it teaches us. And if you don't grow right, history can repeat itself. And sometimes not in the right ways either. Take care. Much love. Walter out. Bye now.